Hey there again to you, Words of Life listener or viewer. I am Pastor Mark. And in this week's episode of Words of Life, we're going to talk about part three of our four-part series, Understanding Affliction, because part three deals with affliction coming from people. Seems simple enough, right? We have to interact with people on any given day at any given moment. But if we understand that none of us are perfect, and if we have flaws, the odds are as patient as God is with us with our flaws, he wants to be just as patient with somebody else and their flaws. And that in itself, that will help us start to understand and be more patient when it comes to understanding affliction. We're going to talk about it, and I expect to see you right here in front of your TV or with your ear pods in. Either way, I'll be right back. See you in a bit. We thank you for joining our Words of Life broadcast, where our mission is persuading the lost, perfecting each believer, and equipping all for service with practical application from God's Word. We now join Pastor Mark for this week's Words of Life. Hey there again to you. This is Pastor Mark. And before I get started again with our third of four in the series, Understanding Affliction, I just want to tell you I appreciate you. I thank you for tuning in via podcast or broadcast because the truth is you could have been anywhere else. You could have been listening to anybody else, but you've decided to devote some of your time as God has led you to hear a word through this ministry. And that's something that my wife and I, we just do not take for granted. We're going to ask in this week's episode that you turn in your word of God to the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, right there in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, the last of the synoptic gospels. Number three, you should be there right now. I'm going to go ahead and put the words up uh, on the screen again. Luke chapter 17, I'm going to read one verse and our reading is as follows. Jesus said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses shall come, but woe to him through whom offenses do come. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, the readers, but most importantly, those that intend to do with his help, his holy word. Today, again, we're resuming uh, the third in our four-part series, the series entitled Understanding Affliction. In part one, we talked about affliction being laid upon us by God for his purposes, for his glory, his story, his will in our lives. And last week, we talked about affliction being a part of the package. It's coming from our adversary, Satan. And today, we're going to talk about today's focal point being this, affliction comes from people. Um, when we talk about affliction, I think we have to tie in that word that Jesus used in the opening text. It is impossible that offenses do not come. In other words, as we live and breathe, we need to expect some type of offense. Offense simply is the temptation to respond to sin. It is to encounter a symbolic stumbling block that causes one to react or to fall. Um, paraphrase, Jesus says, hey, if you're expecting to get through this life without some kind of offense, some kind of whatever coming through people that's going to cause you to stumble and fall, you're expecting something that's impossible. It's going to happen, but just don't make it a habit of being the one that causes offense and you're causing others to always stumble, to fall, or to sin. And so in today's focal point, I want to jump right through it. Um, and I, I'm, I can be transparent here because sometimes we hide behind that, hey, I'm a, I'm a loner, I'm a creative, and we kind of like to be off on our own. Sometimes that's just an excuse for not wanting to interact or deal with people at any given time. And that's just the truth of the matter. And that's and if I'm preaching the word of God, understand the word has to come to the minister first. I have to eat this message first. And that's something God laid upon my heart that, Mark, that's something that I want you to deal with 
you you can't you can't throw your fence up. You can't segregate yourself. You can't just I'm done. I'm not in the mood today. No, we cannot do that because affliction is part of our sanctification baggage on the way to eternity. Guess what? It is going to involve people. Jesus had to have Judas. Jesus had to have Pilate. Jesus had to have Rome. He had to endure the Pharisee and the Sadducee, and he treated them no different. He had to deal with the religious dogma or the attitude. He had to do all of that, but he kept purpose in mind. He had to endure affliction through people for God's purpose through him to be completed. And that was saving you and I eternally securing our salvation to be in his presence forever, avoiding his eternal wrath for those who choose to reject that offer. So understand, we will have to endure affliction. It's just a part of the package. Affliction comes from people. And so as we get that focal point laid down, here's the four, first point that I want us to understand. Point number one, we have to stop expecting people to be to us what only God can be to us. Again, I know I've been guilty sometimes. I'll use an example. Um, I, I, I like therapeutic communication. This is something I teach my high school kids all the time. Um, with therapeutic communication, it also involves active listening. If I'm talking to you, I'm pouring my heart out to you. I really shouldn't be on my phone. I should have your undivided attention. If I'm pouring my heart out to you, I'm saying A, B, C, and D, da 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 blase. That's why I don't even allow cell phones in my high school classroom. But the truth of the matter is, when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody, there's a therapeutic communication you expect, and active listening is a part of it. And then when I don't get that active listening, sometimes I'll just stop talking. Sometimes I'll just walk off. Well, wait a minute. Where are you going, Mark? Da, 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 da. Well, well, you're not listening anyway. That's just, a, that's offense. I have literally taken offense. You know, I've just guard is up. I don't want to talk no more. I, well, I'm listening now. Well, I don't want to explain that. Just petty like that. I don't want to talk no more. You know, I have to get better at that. And I got to stop expecting people to be, to me, what I think I am to others. We penalize somebody quite a bit. I, I know I've done it. We penalize others oftentimes because too many times, we're expecting others to be to us what only God can be of us. We put all these demands on people and, oh my gosh, I know this medicine. I had to eat this message and it just ate me all up today. And as I took the medicine, here's a phrase I often say, I, I wish they would, I wouldn't tolerate. And right there, God showed me, see, you're being intolerant. You're in need of long suffering. You are in need of patience. You need to learn to suffer long with people. We got to stop expecting people to be to us what only God can be to us. And so if I like somebody to actively listen to me, I can't control that other person. I can't put my demands on them. But what I can do is make sure I am an active listener when people are talking to me because I know how that feels. And that builds in me tolerance, patience. But it takes away that demand that we often put on people. We have to stop expecting others to be to us what only God can be to us. Because truth be told, Jesus felt deserted. He was betrayed. He was lied on. And when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he looked to the Father and said, Oh Lord, if possible, can you take... He was just... Weak, but it didn't divert him from purpose. He knew who to run to. He was afflicted by people left and right, but only God could be comforter to him at that moment in time. That's something we have to master. When we're afflicted by people, expecting others to be and do, you know what? I got to run to God and let him know how I feel about this. Quit putting my demands on another. Here's number two, and I think I just referenced it. How do we react? How do we respond when affliction is laying upon us? Nobody understands me. 
Nobody is listening to me. I don't think you're empathizing with me. Do those sound familiar? It's like you're da 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 da. You're not. How do we react and respond? I know how I respond. You know, being this creative and kind of being a loner. The fence goes up. If nobody on the planet talks to me today, I would be just fine. That's not right, but I know that's me. And that's something God has given. Mark, you're going to have to work on that. And I'm going to, my spirit is going to help you, but I'm going to go ahead and send this word. You need long suffering. You need to stop segregating yourselves. Affliction, Jesus said it, offenses will come. We have to learn to handle them in a way that God is pleased. Nobody understands me. Nobody gets me. You know, what happens when you're always, you're not a team player? Well, no, maybe the other people or the person needs to just do their job. But when you're misunderstood, how do we respond? How do we react? We go into our little symbolic, draw the little sandbox, the, we erect our walls up and our little fortress is up. It's just me and the Lord against the world. <laughs> That's just wrong. I know I've been guilty of it. That's why I laugh. Only God, only God can help us to be what we need to be so that we can react and respond the way Jesus did. If I must talk, I'm not going to murmur run to the word. If I'm weak, if I must cry, Lord, I can come to you. And even when those close to us don't understand, the word has a solution for that. If mother, father, sister, brother, those closest to us shall fail us or desert us, the word says God will hold us close. Let's pray for a proper response or reaction, a godly one, when affliction comes to us through a person that we have to interact with on a daily basis. And our last point of the day, number three, we need to learn to be still and be quiet when under attack. Everybody doesn't, in, they don't, they, everything and everybody doesn't require a response from us. We need to just learn sometimes to be still and to be quiet. And as we be quiet, wait on the Lord and he will be timely and give us exactly what we need when we need it to be able to understand this affliction is coming through this person. Offenses shall come, but you know what? This would be a good time to be quiet. Oftentimes we run to our friends, our coworkers, our friends, and we're on the phone and we're explaining to them or we're defending ourselves. And then the situation seems to sometimes just get worse. Sometimes let's just be still. Be quiet when under attack, waiting on the Lord to show up, spirit to rise up in us, and we handle it, and we know our next move. We know our next response. Instead of reacting, and we're at the mouth, and the next thing you know, it has turned into gossip, more trouble. It has gotten worse, and a lot of times, all we need to do is just shh, be still. Be quiet when under attack. Well, that brings my time to a close for today. Again, the third of a three-part series, Understanding Affliction Today. Understand that affliction does come through people, but it's a necessity. We have to interact with people on a daily basis, and so God has put in us what we need to do so in a manner that pleases him. And before we close today, the only reason we preach is to offer you Jesus. Eternity, in lieu of eternity, we are to offer him to you because God's wrath is coming, and it is coming for those that do reject this gracious offer that God is only going to have out for only so long. And you can do that by simply saying, Lord, I accept I'm a sinner. My heart is deceitful every given day, any given moment, I blow it. But that's why Jesus died for me, and he's coming back for me so I confess that, believing that you have secured my forever, and Lord, your Holy Spirit now works in me in a way that pleases you, fashioning my heart to help me deal with affliction, even if it comes from those closest to me, those at work or friend and foe. I thank you, God, for that. We're going to close that by saying amen, or we believe it, so it is so. Well, that's my time for this week's message. Again, 
understanding affliction. It must come through people, but God has put in us what we need to respond in a God-like fashion. Until next week, same time, same pastor, same words of life. I'll see you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye. I said to you that I loved you, would you believe? Did you know that I had to choose to die and rise and make way? I only want to just see you become everything in us you could be. I'm never lying, only telling the truth. If I think of you without me, I only want, I want you, you, me. I want to. To and what if I lose, lose, child, please? Ooh. I want you, you, it's me. I got a future and a plan for us, and I'm the only one who knows. I know you may not understand, but trust the best for you, I'll hold. I know the thoughts that I think of you from beginning to the end I'm the one who gave my all for you On the cross to pay for your sin Only one It's me.